Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to another summer edition of A Guide to Board Parenting. Well, I guess the end of summer now, because yeah. we're recording this on Labor Day. Yeah. Football started this weekend. Woo! More Eagle. Eagle. I, yeah, I, uh, Jennifer and I, I've been packing up the, uh, the recording equipment and putting it in our front, one of our bed- guest bedrooms, and, uh, I was, t- we were having to do sound checks, and, like, I, uh, I started the intro music to do- start the episode, and I was like, God damn, that's loud in my ear, so I'm going to have to fix that in post because it's so blaring. <laughs> here, over here. <laughs> Good job. God, it was loud. Yeah. Uh, well, either way, welcome back to A Guide to Poor Parenting, a podcast from me, Jason. And me, Jennifer. Have a few drinks. And talk shit about our kids. Please follow us on Instagram and YouTube at Guide to Poor Parenting. And Twitter, Facebook, TikTok at Poor Parent Pod. Um, yeah, we've been doing not a lot of content, but we're putting out a steady stream, about two videos per week, or uh, a one, or Cocktail re- cocktail review of what we're drinking on the podcast. We do a wine review. We've been we're in the middle of a of the cruise at the moment. Oh, okay. So it, we just released or I just released the one with Benjamin was last week, and then this was Zane. Okay. We may actually may be out. <laughs> okay. So back to the Costco ca- Advent <laughs> calendar. Ooh, so but I was excited. yeah I'm not. <laughs> but I was telling Jennifer I uh, I on Mondays I usually go to bar yeah bar uh, and slash wine store alcohol store liquor store i guess here in town or in madison called the open bottle while kalia is an art class i go ask if they would sponsor us and like provide us that good but i was like we don't have a big enough listenership benjamin we appreciate your listenership Mm -hmm. um but like i think he is one of like maybe 20 because we just don't have a ton we're we're on an upswing still Mm -hmm. but we don't have a ton so it's like a little hard to sell us as a viable marketer content creators because we don't have a ton of viewers we'll get there y'all you start telling us uh telling about our podcast to your friends and your your family yeah check us out on instagram because that's where our um, our link tree is that's where our links to all our like where you can listen to us on Spotify and Apple Music, Amazon Music, and YouTube Music. And then watch our shorts and all mm-hmm. that. Miss Jennifer, how's your week? It's been okay. I was about to say, it's been... Busy, busy, busy. It's been like almost three weeks since we've recorded. Yeah. Or two two weeks, I think. Yeah, we uh, we moved back our department. So where I work, I've been there eight... And they have remodeled like every floor. Probably three or four t- in the... And my department now never got re- like. Fully. Like every once in a while, they'll like bring in like spare desks and part where they had tore down from the other departments. Right. And just kind of, you know, I don't know, Piece. pieced it together. Frankenstein things that the way? together. Yeah, Frankenstein yeah. did it. And we got a f- over full of so they like brand new everything carpet uh cubicles every um uh, but the cubicles and i can't sit at my desk and stretch my leg ne- mind you i'm almost six feet tall so i'm all legs right so um, other people that are short probably have no problem doing that but we only have one two areas for that are kind of drawery like we have three uh, Do you drawers need a lot of drawers Hmm? Do you need a lot of drawers? Well, I mean, yeah, because considering we went from a big area that had lots of desk space, two overhead compartments, two um, uh, file cabinets down to one file cabinet that's shorter, and then there's a slidey door thing that can kind of like close us off into our cubicle that has a, a little bitty. But what? Do you still wear paper? Yes. Have- well, because we have binders and we have calendars and we have all notes still from... Because some some duties we only do um, once a month. And then when we're training, we really have to like go in depth and forget this stuff because it's just common nature to me. I just do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. You ask me a question about it, I'm like, oh Lord, I got to go back to my book about <laughs> it. And now we're going into a new computer system, so that's even more paper. Do they not have like... Like an online wiki system where y'all can store all this shit and look at it online? I mean, I think they're trying to with what's called how to, but that's not how I do it. So that wouldn't wouldn't help. And there are so many different errors on some of our reports that I've just memorized that we couldn't make it into a, a quote unquote how to because it's just once a ten, every 10 years this one error hits i remember it because i was the one that got it 10 years ago. you know it's just small and it's quiet and i can breathe i i'm right next to the quote unquote like little conference room where the uh collections can go and have a meeting Ugh. and then they're loud and it's like i'm done i don't like sound especially the breathing mm-hmm. so i've kind of gone up 
on my ADHD medicine, my anxiety medicine, I went and bought me a pair of Beats um, headphones that have the noise canceling within them. We'll try Tuesday tomorrow um to see how well it blocks because it's hard to focus when you just hear people talking and having conversations or just <laughs> not the breathing and not the breathing it will and other people it doesn't bother them yeah but me uh, you know the the fuzzy jackets that you know you like kind of swish in them oh it's like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> so like noises really really bother and now you got me like up front like i'm at the like Reception near desk. the near the principal's office like i'm the one that's getting in trouble so they put me up front fuck you i wanted to be in the back in a corner that's dark and no i got like can you wear your sunglasses i do good yeah but i still should but anyways so I mean, we're in we're in our new remodeled area and i don't like it they should find it stupid that they don't have y'all remote work because you're stuck like you don't be there so well when it was uh, you got to work from home in person felt like i was in school again you know mm. that one kid in class did something bad and it just ruins it for everybody one person wasn't doing what they were supposed to when we were in covid and that's why we speaking of that did you hear about so you know how like a lot of these companies are doing turn to work mandates mm-hmm. uh wells fargo did one for their i, I don't think there was a branch job it was like a something were remote and they forced everyone to come back this woman clocked in and was dead at her cube in the office in the office so that tells you how like important these fucking return to work mandates are it's oh like, my god you can still fuck around in the office bullshit oh, how you not know a person's dead oh yeah they were like they could smell it too after a while oh. and they just thought it was backed up sewage oh Oh, she had no friends. She had no work husband or work wife, I guess, I because guess. Oh, I say good morning to everybody. If you don't hear from me, people think yeah. I do it on purpose because yeah. I, I want people to be like, they you want to find your dead body. You did you, you love? <laughs> and I think about that because, um, you know, I love watching this show. Plot of my death, y'all. No, and it's not. No, it's not that part. It's the person dies at home. Yeah. Who, who's going to who's going to find me? How long <laughs> is it going to take someone to be like, you know what? We ain't seen Jennifer in a couple of days. So I need to do like a, to have a check-in buddy. Like if I don't check in, motherfucker, you better call my mama. They call must, your daughter. They must have had like really high cubicles or something. Because like I don't see in every cubicle farm I've ever been in, they're either not tall enough to hide you that well. Or you like there the last job I had, there was a spot you could have hidden like you could a cubicle you could have been in and no one would have seen you because it was kind of a, but i don't know like the every job i ever had i made your pathway in the office so there's no way you would have missed me well and that and, and mo like i'm thinking about mine there's a neighbor well, there's multiple so we don't have a spot that like one person can sit and doesn't have a neighbor everybody has neighbors do y'all don't have hotel and well I, hotel for what? hoteling cubes so like if for uh if you have a hybrid work model sometimes they don't you don't have a specified desk but it, you might come in two or three times a week and so there's like cubicles you can float around in no. so they're like hotel cubes we, it was yeah. pretty common with the art we we don't have those because everybody's back in the office no yeah. one is remote crazy but yeah. it, that's a crazy story about the yeah. lady i and i fear sometimes i'm like you know if i just die in my bed the dogs would lick me and then my cat would eat oh your son would have bust down the door and started going through your shit first <laughs> he probably wouldn't tell nobody i was dead though uh, he might eventually <laughs> He's like, I'll hunger mom. He'll probably go run away and go to his friend's house. It's not like he knows anybody's numbers. Mm. Although, I would have called because I would have been like, okay, I haven't heard from Jennifer. And you know if she's like late or she didn't tell me. She, like, she would have texted me to apologize for not dropping Wesley off. Yeah. So, if I haven't heard an apology. So, you're my check-in buddy. Yeah, if Even if it's a couple hours late. Because that <laughs> one, I, I did go to work late the other day. Yeah. It's the first time I've done it probably in the 18 years that I've been there. No one said anything work-wise. And I wake up. I had taken my afternoon medicine along with my nighttime medicine. It's like, what does it hurt? I forgot to take it. Apparently. But apparently, it, it just lets you sleep through three alarm clocks. <laughs> so don't do that again. Unless um, you really need to sleep. Yeah. Uh, unless it's the weekend. Um, and so I messaged my bosses and I'm like, I hate feeling rushed. So it just starts bad. But I messaged my bosses and I'm like, Hey, I apologize. I just woke up. I'm hurrying. I'm on my way. And they just were like, okay. I mean, yeah, I've never done it. So I would, I was, I would have hoped someone would be worried. And then I messaged, I was supposed to bring him to you. 
And you're just like, oh, we just thought he had therapy or something. And I'm like. Well, I mean, yeah. that usually is what happens if like you don't. Because I forget. Yeah. If, if or you, you forget that I told you. Yeah. So I wasn't going to say anything. I was like, eh, she probably, he just had therapy and I just forgot that she told me, which is a very common occurrence because yeah. we'll tell each other stuff. And I'm like, okay, remember it. I what time do you have? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah right. Jennifer and I both have like our calendars on our phones are very full with sh- filled with shit because. We- and I use a reminder. Fuck be like, talk to my phone because I ain't going to say it so that it doesn't do it. But I'd be like, hey. Well, that's one of the reasons. Set a reminder. I was thinking of switching over back to a dumb phone not too long ago, just to cut down on my social media because I was. But I was like, I can't survive without. It's too much of a pain in the ass to put everything in T nine and a fucking dumb phone. Shit, just just find a well. (laughs) But and have some self. Self control. Yes, I will say. What is is self control? It is slightly pathetic. I am on TikTok. TikTok so much that the uh, the share and create buttons on the right and the bottom uh-huh. are burned. Like you can see. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> well, because a lot of times I'll just have it as background noise, and it's like I it's just like the Reddit posts. I'll listen. You know, the like, it's like uh, Zane with his favorites. Yeah. On or the... you with your t- your movies while yeah. you're working. Well, I'm sorry you overslept, and I'm sorry you're. <laughs> in I mean, a teeny, I was. Tiny little cubicle. I was. I woke. I woke. I'm. And the thing is, is like when the alarm goes off, Zuri, my puppy dog, is like, okay, okay mom, wiggling in the bed. And then she'll get happy and her tail starts slapping me. <laughs> Didn't feel none of that shit. Ooh, you were tired. And like they usually start barking because they got, they want to eat and they got to go potty. They were sleeping right along with me. I'm like, how you, how y'all not wake me up? Y'all wake me up on a Saturday morning when I'm on to sleep, but you can't wake me up when I'm actually supposed to wake up. <laughs> I guess everybody needed some sleep, but I just don't like that rush feeling. I yeah. hate it. But I, I didn't get into trouble or anything because, like you said, I'm always early. So it's not like it's I'm going to get fired from it, but I just didn't like that. Completely. I haven't. I don't know. The last two jobs I've had, we've had such a flexible work schedule. It's like we had core hours to be at because I, I would show up at eight but like there were not getting Doing my, your work as long yeah. as you get your work done yeah because they treat us like fucking adults yeah that like, was the place that gave you the time pizza. off right that's the one i was talking about yeah, this, uh, this, i was just trying to make yeah. sure I... yeah this job is too my a couple of my co-workers are in at seven um and then one of my co-workers like yeah what time do you get in i was like eh, about nine she's like eh. and my boss like yeah core hours like 93 like i get my work done like and if it's an emergency or they need to reach me they all have my tech my phone number right but usually like i'll when I drop the kids off at school, I will go Panera Bread and write, stand up, or I'll just work on other stuff all day. But yeah, but they'll text me like, where are you? <laughs> I'm trying to eat my cookie. And you like stopped at like the worst time. I'm trying not to smack into the microphone because I don't like that noise either. <sighs> How has your week been, Jason? Well, you were gone talking about you, so I thought you were just going to continue to go. So I was just like, okay, let him just run through. Uh, my week's good. Um, we have, yeah, we've been, we banked a few episodes and we actually started doing some remote podcasts. So we have our first remote podcast this two weeks, um, not this week. And, uh, we got some friends from Texas who Jennifer finally got to meet Mm -hmm. and we had a good time. Really liked both of them. Yep. We'd love to hang out with both of them. Yep. They're a blast. Uh, we took Kalia to Point Mallard this past weekend. For, uh, it's like, it's Labor Day weekend. We hadn't done much this summer besides... Mm, which was fun. Yeah, it was a blast. Yeah, but it was a lot. And expensive. Yeah. So I was... And Wesley don't deserve nothing fun <laughs> right now. So I was, I was, uh, was like, let's do something on... Let's go Point Mallard. And so, which is a, a very park. small water park or in Northern Alabama. Yeah, but it's and fun. It's fun. And it's not expensive. It was like 28 bucks. Which is fine. It's yeah. like for, you know, a couple of hours cheaper than the Miss Pat show we saw the other day, yep. who was a blast. Definitely. She comes to your area, watch her if you yep. like a loud black. Yeah. But we, um, Friday, I was like, I want to see if anybody else wants to come with this point Mallard. So I called our Chris to get on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what y'all doing? It's like, oh, prepping for the, uh, for their son's birthday party tomorrow at two, which you RSVP'd for. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be there. Shit. <laughs> So like, see that's us in our memories, and then not even remembering to look at a calendar Uh or make other. Uh, Yeah, and the sad thing is, I uh, I had invited Kalia. I was like, Kalia, do you want to invite your friend to come with us? Yeah, because she really likes. Oh yeah, they're 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 besties. besties. Yeah. So she's like, oh yeah. So fuck, what do I do? Yeah, and you had (laughs) already coordinated with their dad, and then it was all set, and then you're like. 
oh, decent chance. Let's just do it Sunday. Yeah. Well, luckily I texted. I was like, hey, um, it's looking like rain. Are you guys free on Sunday? It's like, yeah, we're free. God. So I told Kalia, I was like, yeah, we're good. And then luckily while we were at the Chris, the birthday party for our friend, uh, a rain yep. and we were like, oh, thank God we should deal with this. Yeah. But then when we went to Point Mountain on Sunday, we were there for two hours and a storm fucking yep. rolled in. So we got kicked out. Yeah. Because so. as soon as they see lightning, they're like out. They don't let you, they don't even let you wait it out. I don't think they're just like, because it's such a short time period frame of sundays anyways yeah. like that they're open they're just well i think there pe- were people staying um yeah. and i i don't remember how long it lasted but we'd been there two hours and so much of the park was shut down like the wave pool was open and the olympic size pool was open and you could dive off the diving boards but the big slide into that one was shut down oh that's my favorite slide. i know a huge slide uh, probably like 50 feet 40 feet up three mm-hmm. humps yeah, the Clothes blast. come off. You you like fly in the air. You go past the the little barrier that's supposed to stop you. It's a blast. It's a blast. Yeah. But that one was shut down. And then we had parked. When we came in, there was a big line at the where the wave pool side was. So we parked on the other side, which is probably where the lazy river is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which are, so at, at Point Mallard is like there's the wave pool on one side and the lazy river on the other side. And there's probably a Football field length between them, maybe. Oh, yeah, because I have a swimming pool. In there. Yeah. But there's a lot of walking, too. Yeah, there's a big, there's a probably like maybe a hundred yard path yeah. from the Olympic size swimming pool to the lazy river side. Yeah, that has and, the toilet bowl slide. And the toilet bowl slide was shut down. Well, that's okay because I hate that one back so bad. But the, also, the problem was the uh, there's um, speed slide, yeah. where it is like those were shut down. They're usually shut down, though. Oh, are they? I don't know if it's just. No, they don't have enough workers to watch. I think, yeah, I think that was it. Um, or that you know would care. But I. But what about the other ones? The ones with the tubes. The two, two of the three were open. So we did. Well, that's the, a long walk. Yeah. For if the well, if you want to do the Lazy River, then that's like my jam. We did that. Like we when Zane and I first got in, Kalia and her friend went over to the wave pool, mm-hmm. and we're like, okay, y'all feel comfortable going off on your own? They're like, yeah. So I'm like, all right, go have fun. And so Zay and I did, we did the two brides and the first time I did it, I flipped as soon as I hit the wall. Pretty Second time, uh, we, we, since two slides were open, I did the other one and Zane did the one I did. I got with about five feet of the end of the ride and I flipped, whacked my head against the slide. Ooh. Ooh, it hurt. And then I was like, and the tube went out from underneath me and I had to like scoot out three feet. Oh. <laughs> Such a pain in the ass. I was like, well, That's this is a little embarrassing too. I was like, this is a little fun, but. No. Um, and then we got in the lazy river and then, and then uh, we were walking back over the pool and we were going to go to the wave pool and. Kalia and her friend were walking. Yeah, that wave pool ain't no joke. Um, it's not soft yeah. on the bottom of that wave at all. And I guess it's supposed to be for traction because those waves can come at you Knock pretty quickly. Your out. But yeah, I've scraped my foot many a wave pool. Yeah. So, but we uh, we hung out with the girls in the wave pool for a while, and then I got them lunch. Um, I was like, "Why well, can't go?" And we were kept seeing these rain clouds come in, and I was like, "Oh, they're gonna kick us out!" But I was like, I was starting to tell me a little rumbly, so I went to the bathroom as I was walking to the restrooms. So I'm sitting in the restroom, and I was telling Jennifer that earlier this that I was, I was trying to, I, I was wearing a sunscreen shirt because I didn't want to have to put sunscreen all over my body. I just wear a shirt to cover me up, cake myself. So I took that off. And as I was taking off, I forgot that I had my sunglasses on my top of my head. And they and your fl- hat, right? Yeah, my hat. Well, I got the hat off without a problem. But I ended up flinging the uh, sunglasses into the stall next to me. I was like, eh. So I get done doing my business and I go to the stall and they landed in a pot full of poo. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, those $10 sunglasses are going to stay there because I'm not fishing yep. out. <laughs> Hell, were- my 100 plus dollar birthday present to me like 10 years ago. They would have stayed down. But we had a good time. The girls, I think, were ready to go about three, you know, after two hours, just because there just wasn't a ton to do. Yeah. Um, and we, I didn't like, we didn't want to sit around and wait. But... And kids, they want to get back. But they had fun. They were obnoxious and loud as hell in the car. Girls are. And uh, found out the Cleo's friend is actually born five days after. Oh wow. Thirty uh, six. Wow. And there's not. I just don't find a ton of people born in Chris or around Christmas. Oh, so I know. One. The second three. one. Who's the two other two? I know pimp. Yeah. Oh, Molly, met... Molly's pimp. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, I didn't know. Uh, I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Or around that time frame, like a couple of days before, a couple of days after, that sort of thing. I know about five in the 
probably to new Year's. that age. like christmas is, I've, I've seen it several times that christmas is actually the rarest day nowadays because they can induce oh yeah um but yeah i don't like my i of all my very born in december yeah, great conversation well, I would, like I you november might know november is probably the most i know most people most, i know are september through november yeah most people are probably november to valentine and you christmas know, but your, yeah. your, your yearly sex on valentine's day yeah. Baby happened. Or Christmas. Know. They're like, oh, we're on Christmas break. Let's get a little brown, brown chicken, brown cow. But whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's weird. We went into a weird tangent on that one. <laughs> so for Anyways. all our 15 listeners, if you were born on December, let us know. Yeah. Right in. <laughs> yeah, Jason wants wants to know he's not the only one. I mean, I know I'm not the only one. Poor baby there, has to have Christmas and birthday on the same day. I guess uh, people fucking on spring break. or. <laughs> yeah. But we try. I mean, I get you two presents. Oh, I was like, we try to fuck on spring break. <laughs> I mean, before kids. Oh. No, not really, because that's I ain't going spring break trip. The implication to find that, a, that you and I were having sex. I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> I Play along that. with that, Jennifer. Come on. Oh yes, Jason. <laughs> Let's go to the beach. Spring break. Yeah. Kyle, kick your husband out of his bed. Tell him to go find somebody else. I'll give you a biological child. I'm your uh, I'm your hall pass. I'm your beard. You're my beard. Hall pass. He allows. Yep. Oh. Anyways. Anyways. So what? Well, we... So that was um, the trip this weekend. Yeah. And Cleo definitely. The I was like, did you have fun? Yeah. But I was like, are you okay? Yeah. You, every time I'm there. <laughs> but you're okay, right? Yes. Ma'am. So did you have fun? Yes, ma'am. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to lead off with a negative. I need the overall. It was a good time, except this happened. Yeah. I love that baby. I'm like, I, I am so tenderfooted and like generic white man. I uh got a blister ball of my foot walking pathway or not the sad thing is i got it before i even got on the pathway to the wave pool area so just walking around um, uh, the lazy river area oh so i don't know i like there were some really hot spots and maybe a heat blister i just don't know but yeah i was like i was nursing like a quarter size blister on the ball so i still have have to walk toes curled up so i don't hit that (laughs) got it Chunklas are your friend. Yeah. And that's flip flop what a chunk is. <laughs> For our but the audience. thing is, I didn't say that. Uh flip flops hurt me. Well, I wore the my Velcro. Ah. So I but I didn't wear them. I should have probably worn them when I were walking the area, but I was like, oh, I don't need them. You probably needed them. Maybe I need that. Because the chunklas really hurt the big my the surgery at the beach, especially walking oh, yeah. when we were on the cruise. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't do a lot of walking because I don't go to it. But <laughs> all right, we probably have talked a lot. Let's see. Well, well we got to talk. Oh, what did okay. I make you? You made, well, I called it a Charlene Temple <laughs> because I know a Shirley Temple is non alcoholic. Uh-huh. And you said that with the recipe, it was called a dirty Shirley Temple. Mm-hmm. So. Charlene is very yummy, kind of like uh, Kool Aid. It's really sweet because of the grenadine and yep. the Sprite um, and a lot of vodka. And I don't really like vodka, but this good. is really good. It can't vodka, mm-hmm. so this is one drink that would fuck. I wouldn't. I I could make this as a pitcher for like. A, oh yeah. A, call it like a party or something like that. Yeah, That'd like be good. Christmas, mm-hmm. or if we ever like did like Labor Day parties or. Yeah. Fourth of July parties like we used to do. Before before we had energy. <laughs> That's before true. when we had energy. Yeah. But yeah, I really like it. Um Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm I'm digging it. I was I was uh, all I was thinking was like I got this grenadine, stop buying like shit. So it's like, ooh, I can make a Shirley Temple. Well, and then you also had one when we were at Miss Pat's, oh, and that's, that's right. what reminded you, yeah, kind of, right. I think, of, oh, let me add some vodka to this, and let me see yes. if we, you know, because this lady kept coming around, did y'all order a Shirley Temple? I was like, I didn't. I got my two. Zane got his two drinks. I don't know if he did. He might have, so she just put it on the de- on the table and left and didn't say nothing else. I mean, yeah, so, but yeah. A dirty Shirley Temple or a Charlene? Charlene or Charlene? However you want to pronounce okay. it, baby. Okay. I think I said Charlene, but I could be Shirley. wrong. Shirley. <laughs> Please don't. Um. <laughs> Please don't. But if you'd like to be on the podcast, we'd love to have you on. <laughs> she ain't got no kids. But she got goddaughter. Oh, uh, Miley, Miley Cyrus. And Maybe we can get uh, Billy Ray. We can get Billy Ray on. Mm, not Billy Ray. Because Achy Breaky Heart is like the... We don't have to have him sing. It's like the... <laughs> 
it's it's a song that's nails on a chalkboard. We don't have and to have him sing it. And it's not even the, him singing it. It's because when my cousin came from Germany, back oh, whenever that's early. Right. Um, full German, trying to learn English. She that was her that. favorite song. Oh my goodness. So she just walked around the house. She said, achy, breaky heart, achy, breaky heart. Like she was, <laughs> oh, and then she her. tried to put a little Southern twist with a German accent. It was bless it was hilarious. Her. But now every time I hear that, it's because she's old. And I think they stayed a week. Like, I'm, Child. I'm and make my tape over. Well, Billy Ray. She ain't got no kids. <laughs> said, she's smart. I said Billy Ray. Oh, Billy Ray. Okay. Sorry. All right. Well, oh, um, so this is one of our Reddit post And episodes. I hope you guys like these. We've, we're trying them just because it's hard for us to get topics of what we want to do. Yeah. And but, it's not and, always easiest for us to get guests either. Yeah. So. Well, I was one of my the guy who was on the podcast, their last guest, Brian, I, he's struggling to find guests now for his. And yeah. I was like, you know. The fact that our interviews are a third of what we do, it helps me at least because it's not always easy coordinating schedules between yeah. three people. So Right. And you're on Reddit a lot. So you yeah. just be like, oh, yeah, here. Here's and so one. he reads them, um, knows what they're about. He just sends them to mm-hmm. me and I read them blindly. And I think I like that better because it's true, like, oh, shit kind of thing. So if you guys like them, let us know if you don't like them. Yeah. Let us know. But then you have to give us some fucking topics because <laughs> yeah, we need seriously. help with that. Or fourth season in, right? Fourth, yeah. Fourth season in. We've thought about a lot of topics. We'll go back to some just because the kids are growing and mm-hmm. different things, you know, come up that can be the same topic. It's just in a different perspective now that they're older. But, yeah, we need help. It's funny when you said that because when we first started the podcast, like, oh, we'll never run out of topics to talk about. Like four seasons in, we're like, to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, this morning was like, what about this? I'm like, I mean, that's interesting, but it's like, let's see if I can broaden that out a tad. So, <laughs> well, you'll hear about it next episode. Well, hell, we spend the first thirty minutes of the podcast just talking about our damn selves. So, yeah, well, I mean. People you know, seem to like it. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, we don't really have to have much content to it because we can just talk. <laughs> we are very good talkers. This is true. All right. Sometimes so. too much on the tangent part, but, you know, follow us down the rabbit. All right, Miss Jennifer, what's your first All right. Reddit post? I got to go kind of far away. Eyesight is horrible. Do, you need to, do I need to borrow Zane's readers? <laughs> no. All right. So my first post is... Uh, post? Yeah, post. Tell, tell them the subreddit. Be the, Adoption? The, yeah. Okay. Oh, R dash uh-huh. adoption. That's where it's from, guys. I've learned something new today. <laughs> All right. So ta- uh, the title. Title. How to respond in a way that shuts down comments. Tell them to shut the fuck up. No. All right. Here it goes. Hi, all. My husband and I are fostering to adopt a 13-year-old boy. Don't do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was me. Who had TPR at sit and has been in the system since. Ever since he's been in our home, we keep getting comments from people saying, You're so amazing for what you're doing. I bet he's so thankful for you guys. He's so lucky. I'll wait. <clears throat> oh, I like this. These comments in all caps. Enraged me too, whoever wrote this. Me too. This kid has been through more trauma in his 13 years of life than these people will probably experience in their entire existence. He is not luck and and insinuating that he should be grateful to be adopted by two random people or that we are God's greatest gift to him. Oh, I hope that. I emphasize on God a little bit on that one. <laughs> to him is extremely, extremely frustrating. I know that these people do not mean harm or understand why it, it is inappropriate, but that doesn't mean that they can or should continue to say that. I am looking for a way to respond to these types of comments without being a mess about it like I would L-O. I Be saw, a fucking douche. Well, but I mean, like, if it's your sweet old grandma and she says something like that. It's like, then you say, Grandma, he's lost everybody in his entire world before... He's ever met you or us. He's lost every person he met in these foster places that he's been. He has had so much loss. He is not the lucky. We're the to give. That's what you can say to to everybody else. Shut the fuck up. I, the, the reason I picked this one is because I've actually had this from Zane's dad before. He's he, he's he's like, oh, Justin's so lucky to have found y'all, and I'm like, mm. the sentiment is there. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like. No, we are the um, our paper umbrella in the dog pile of shit 
of loss that he's had to go through. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's a nice cap, but it's like he had, they had to go through so much crap. Excuse me. To get to yeah. us where we're, we're possibly adopting. Yeah. They didn't win a prize. <laughs> no. My, my, so I've never had a family member say it. So that's why I'm just like, shut the fuck up. You don't know. Have you had, <clears throat> have I've you had, had anybody... random people in the street. Oh, yeah. I've, Which is the worst. Have you had, I've had a few people uh, come up like, you're doing gods with that. And then I go, no, the demon. To... <laughs> yeah, I've never seen someone run away. I don't really do that because I am very nice, but in, in some ways. Says the um, yeah, perpetual people pleaser. <laughs> no, like, I, the thing is, it's people, and it's, it is, people just don't understand. They just lost everybody. You you can't understand that because you didn't have that. You had parents growing up. You might have lost a nana or a grandpa mm-hmm. or, or, you know, old yeller, but you didn't lose every single person person in your life that siblings grandparents uncles aunts all of them gone and then you, pro- you go to a foster home and then you get acclimated to them and then bam you go to another home and you probably weren't being sexually abused by relatives or ignored and neglected and- or not had power and had to play under candlelight and mama made it a game so you didn't know that it wasn't something that you were supposed to i mean it's 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 a lot for you just because i don't know half the shit that west before i got but there's a lot of a lot that i know that's more than enough for me to be like damn i understand why you're an asshole just stop being an asshole to me (laughs) i mean like west not west justin Texted me one time that he was super grateful that we adopted him. Yeah. But I never, like, the expectation was never, I was, you know, I was just happy that. Right, right, because you got him at seven. Yeah. So I was like, I was never, like, I never, I was like, oh, that would be nice, but I never thought. Right. But, yeah, I don't. I would say it's just for our it usually comes from our friends and family because they're like, all they can see is the nice thing are like. If I didn't know any better and I saw my best awesome kid, I'm like, oh, it's so nice of you. He's so lucky. Like, yeah, that's your perspective. But right. like, it's, it's. It... But he should not need that done for him. Yeah. It should already been, been, been done kind yeah. of thing. It's a tough thing. So for it any is. of our listening audience, if you have friends or families and they're going through adoption process, don't. Because yes. it's like, you don't understand how awful these kids have had it. And listen, they say this child is the spawn of the devil believe them (laughs) even if they're an angel with you Mm -hmm. because that's what happens a lot is that they hold so whoever their primary it seems is that's no one else really my mom got a little taste of it when i went on the cruise because she got wesley in full form because she forgot to give him his pills and she's like oh my god he was and then he you know we'll tell the story later um, some of the people on here were like, they say we are the ones who feel grateful, thankful to be a part of his. To so kind of switch it back. I mean, you could do that if you wanted to be nice. I think I, if anyone says, I, I just pray to God, whoever says that, they should feel lucky. Or around. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Don't ever. Like, it's one thing to say it to us because, you know, the parents kind of can. We have coping skills and we can handle some of it a little bit better. It might infuriate us, but don't ever. It's, no. It's oh, like, you're so lucky that she's your mommy. I mean, that's just more trauma to that child. Yeah, you're so lucky. Well, you're... especially if they haven't gotten to the point of calling that oh, person yeah. mommy. Because, you know, some kids, it takes them a minute. Yeah. Some kids will never say it. Oh, yeah. It's... Some kids say it third weekend and then say right after I got a girlfriend. <laughs> that's what mine did. It's a tricky subject. Um, it is. I, I honestly, I think it, it doesn't happen to um, a bunch. It's happened twice. I get the. I've gotten the. Y'all are doing the Lord private. Um, it and was private. Like they kind of. Oh. Um, they didn't. Oh, you're doing the Lord's work. Did or, you know him? No, they just came up to me. Oh, in the dark. Um, Would no. You like to <laughs> sacrificing a goat. Woo. Um, usually, like if it's just a one-off, a person I don't know, I go off. Um, when it happened to. I think father-in-law I was like, eh. he said he's not lucky to have, like we're the lucky. Like you know, like I said earlier, it's the we are the pleasant end. That's all we. And for some kids, even the adopted great. And, and I mean, he had some good time in his seven that he can look back on. Like that was good, time. and he knows what the bad. Time. Yeah, and you know that he's grateful. Yeah, and he is no longer like 
if you wouldn't have adopted him, he would have been thrown out on his ass and had nothing. And he knows he has fame, which is something a lot of these kids don't know the fame. Because, I mean, he might not call you dad, but you know... Oh, yeah, I know he loves That me. you are his dad. I know his, I'm important in his life. Yeah, and your papa now. <laughs> to baby alive. And to all my... But I'm just because, you know, yeah, yeah, just... Yeah. All right. All right, so done my... done that one? Yep. Oh, do you want to read any of the comments or any of the ones? I just kind of... There really wasn't... Yeah. Some weird, weird ones. I just... Let you talk now and I'll drink my drink and oh, eat my... Oh, Um. So this one comes from the Ask Our... Ask Parents subreddit. I was a recent, recently found the subreddit, so it was gra- gla- gra- great because, you know, the parenting subreddits and the adoption question. I want something that will spark a question for Jennifer and I to talk about. So this one, uh, the title is, What is it like to have a child after 35? Uh, edit. And the person sa- who wrote this is, says they're not a... P- edit. Thank you. No, I guess... Uh, okay, so the... the I apologize. The, they wrote an edit at the beginning of the post i guess they edited the post and then put it at the top instead of the bottom Mm. so okay so the the post says basically the title i want children but i'm but not until i'm over 35 especially with how medicine and healthcare has improved almost all my friends are having children now context i'm 25 and most of them are telling me i'll regret having children later in life so parents what is it like to have children five do you have any regrets not having children? I'm still firm in my decision, but I would like people to back. And then the edit says, thank you everybody for commenting. I really appreciate it. The overall comments said it was fine to have a child over 35. I'm definitely nowhere near the age of when I want children, but with all the advice, I would be getting some work workups and make sure I'm healthy to have. Thank you again. So since you and i both adopted our kids after well after uh, what are your thoughts as uh, she's chewing let I'll, you do l- the thoughts. yeah let me I'm, do i'll do mine first i was trying to give you the okay i'll the start look because it's you know yeah, sorry she's like chomping away on me. um i would say there's no problem having a child after 35. however my energy levels have dropped significantly in my 40s and so if you wait too late into your 30s and into your 40s, you're going to be constantly fucking exhausted. And you'll have the money. You maybe. Def- maybe. If you're like in a good career, you'll definitely, You well, even if you don't, as long as you're not making bad financial choices, you'll be in a better financial tr- place, hopefully right. by the time you're 35. But I, the energy level is the thing that makes it hard for me to like i enjoy being a parent but i'm so goddamn tired and i'm so like scatterbrained what else i gotta do and and just being able to get out and enjoy your kids more takes energy like the old the longer you wait the less the less i have eh, i have have found for you yeah and it could just be covid that long covid shit really fuck i mean covid just fuck royal but i don't have as much patience but I also, Wesley is truly my child because I sit with Kalia and shit and not be igno- annoyed by it or, all right, let's go play what, play, but, you know, let's hang out and I'm fine. As soon as my son, oh, I don't. <laughs> and that's why I say it's truly my child because you, you're, you have a hard time teaching Kalia thing. I would not, but I would have a hard time. Wesley, you wouldn't. So I feel like that's, be, that's the true definition of being a true parent. Can't teach someone else. <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, I mean, just know that what you uh, quote-unquote plan for, it's not going to happen. You cannot plan anything. Monetary-wise, probably might be the only way, but you still might not have enough. Kids are fucking... Agreed. They'll eat you out of house and home. Some will want to do 12000 to $40,000 a year soft uh, baseball games, softball games. Let's go horse riding. Um competitions or just dressage um but kids are expensive day the cost of daycare before they hit pre-k alive might as well just so i uh, yeah i i wanted when i said what i wanted to adopt i wanted a kid that was school ready so five and up i love babies i love toddlers but i didn't want to deal with daycare. we uh, we've mentioned them on this podcast before our friends troy and chris they have a three-year-old who just had us and they are in there yes. and i am so tired and i like i don't know how they handle it they have well they have Roy a lot of has the most energy. Yeah. He'll just run around with that kid. He'll be out in the field pretending to mow with with mm-hmm. with Troy and they just run amok. Yep. So I guess maybe it's just us. Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> I do I don't know. I I do think like the older you get, the more tired you become. And also like I don't know, I, I do feel like I put more effort in with Justin than like I do with Galia sometimes. Just because I'm like you put in a lot of effort 
and it didn't seem to matter one way or the other. So I'm just like, <sighs> I mean, like I, I try to do the best, but I also don't like stress out. that. I guess that's one. Of, you don't, I don't stress about it as much. Cause I'm like a lot of what you do doesn't matter in the end. Yeah. It, it, there's a lot of societal expectation of how you're supposed to, but <laughs> a lot of it, as long as you are providing a safe, they're going to do with less. Right. And so you stressing about it doesn't make a difference. And I mean, you thought here and just quit school right away and he tried. Yeah, he gave it a, he gave it and a year and a half. And you were all proud because you moving from different high schools and group homes and he, you know, he was kind of bounced everywhere, kind of getting close to that time of here's, you know, a toothbrush, toothpaste and some walking money. Bye-bye. Yep. And so it was like, oh, well, he'll get here. He'll want. And yes, there's been ups and downs with him, but he has grown so much since you adopted. Kalia, you are growing her. <laughs> I guess it's the only way that I... You found what she liked and you are watering this of her... <laughs> um, I'm just trying and to money. be poetic <laughs> with all your money, yes. Um, because she is showing interest in things now that it's like, okay, we can do this. But then during the summertime, there's this really nice tennis camp, reading camp. It's cheap. You're going to go there too. <laughs> Y'all compromise. So that works out, I think, well. 35 is a good age. Uh, you know, just, just know when you get a kid... You, you just can't leave them and then just go to the club with your friends. So you kind of have to get all that shit out. Um, vacations are no longer single vacations. You got a kid with you unless you got some really good people that will babysit while you go on vacation. Would you have done it? earlier had you would you change the time like the age i don't think you could have because you always you know yeah i don't i don't was is roommate a a, a deterrent i don't know i would I, figure that would be like a village i would imagine but, all the gay men that lived with you would have moved out had you oh, gotten a job that's true. but none of them paid anything so it's that's not true. like you know oh that's true. well no some, that um some of them didn't yeah. pay and and that wasn't the reason why my, um they were my kids you know <laughs> the house of the wayward gays and military that you was my house you should have adopted a little gay boy i mean that probably would would have been the best for me because there's a lot of love there. <laughs> um i i adopted who i was supposed to adopt yes drives God. but you can't i mean it's shopping for kids and you can't see by this little video where they make you do things like justin was reading shakespeare he don't hey, read he, huh he said he read shakespeare he didn't read it. but i'm saying like yeah, yeah. you know and then the, he's in there washing dishes you know that shit didn't happen all the time <laughs> but you can't go by these pictures in these catalogs or mm -hmm. these videos and be like oh you're a cute little gay boy come home with me uh, some of them yes but the other thing is is would they want a single mother because they get that choice there was that one who did we zay and i were supposed to well, meet him i didn't i, I, know, I didn't I, get i'm just saying it does one. happen I know it does, but I met Wesley. He seemed like a cool kid. All the stuff was, there's no medicine. There's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> and then there was, the there, well, I mean, not like that, you know, but like most times when you were, when you get the, the, the nibs, the, the Bio. fast. Bio. Yeah. That thing, it goes into more, more detail. And, and they were like, and usually all of them had. Oh, yeah. Well, because the previous parents, foster parents, anybody just didn't care. He didn't have any problem because he was his babysitter. Sure. So, yeah. You should have kept up with that. He's not <laughs> going to be bad well, and know. need medicine. Not saying that he, I'm messing up my words, but that's all. And But when I got him eight years old, he couldn't read. Just yep. put it that way. Yep. It hardly knew his ABCs at eight years old. If they would have put a, just an incy bincy teeny weeny <laughs> little bit of, effort. or the teachers put any type of effort into this child, I think it would have been better for him. Yeah. Whatever, I got him. We got uh, tutoring started. We were working with math. And now he's in IEPs, doing a little bit better. And it's just a slow slog. So 35, good year. Would I have done it before then? No, because I like hanging out with my friends and doing adult things. And I think it just came at the perfect time for me to be a mama of a, a two-legged person instead of all the four-legged um, mamas. I've been mama. The only way I would have done it early is if and if i had known everything i would, i might have because i would have liked to have been younger to have more energy with kalia yeah but yeah i mean you can't change I mean, the past if i could have got him right out of 
mom and dad. Yeah. Oh, very different. He could be a completely different child. But, but it just doesn't work that way. I agree. You got to work with what you got. I think 35 is okay. Yeah. Get waiting too much later, though. Yeah, don't be like 85. Well, I would say 40 is pushing it. I can't imagine having a baby at 40. Yeah. Hard. Um, What's our next Was one? he doing hmm. adoption or was he just saying like as a they overall, just overall he's question. 35, could be a heterosexual man looking for a woman? Uh, Did he say looks, anything about adoption? It does not say whether they're a man. Or... Oh, okay. I apologize. Check it. Okay. I was just wondering because I'm like, we're all talking about like adoption. I mean, you can go have a baby at any time if you're a heterosexual man. Just go knock Based up a woman. Based on the name of Jasmine Irene, I think it's a woman. Okay. So, I don't know. Jasmine, so, if you ever hear this podcast, I yeah. you will. Yeah. Um, but if you do, uh, at 35, I think it's fine. Yep. Wouldn't make too much. No. But, but Just because you, I would you say, can go and, through some stuff with your body at 35. You're yeah. considered a geriatric pregnancy. pregnancy yeah. And that just sounds so horrible because you're only 35 years old. and. I would it, say 30 to 35 is probably the... I mean, 30... But if you adopt, you could do 35, 45... But that's a whole different can of worms. Yes. And you All don't right. mess up. <laughs> All right, Ms. Jennifer, what's our next one? All right. So mine is... I picked this one just... <laughs> because Jennifer needs some answers on this. All right. So again, oh, it's at R... Dash parenting. That was the last Yeah, one. so the R just means the subreddit and then parenting is the... Well, you told me to say it, okay, so that's I'm what I'm know. doing. Okay. Stop yelling. Okay, title. Ah, I got it. How do I stop losing my shit with my... I don't... All right, and then there's like some really orange lettering that says toddler one to three years. So that's uh, a tag on the post. Right, but it was just really bright, so yeah. I like it. It's auburn orange, but damn, I mean, you don't have your readers on. Okay, so here we go. Y'all ready? I feel humiliated having to post don't. And I'm sure the comments will be harsh. Don't. Uh, I just need some sincere advice for a mother, me, who is struggling. I'm not so, no, I'm just so tired of everything in the battle. Tired of the whining, tired of the tantrums, being told no by my child. And it just gets to the point where I get so mad, I just, I hate yelling. I hate it so much. Okay. I hate it so much. Feel like I'm running, no, ruining their childhood and they are mine. Also, just to add, I've been trying this timeout method with my three-year-old. When I put him in timeout, he goes into a major tantrum like spitting on, but I don't want, it gets worse when they're thir. <laughs> I still get the wine. I still get the tantrums at thir. All right, Jason, what you think? Um, sounds. This don't bad. bring up gentle. Pain. No. Um. Um. I. So again, like ignorant of the situation. Probably she. It sounds like she, or uh, I'm guessing it's mom. Uh. Well. I don't know. Just. I mean, it sounds like a mama thing because you yeah. know it's artistic rain. So I don't know, but. The way that they talk, it sounds like it would be a mom doing yeah. that. Because so, dad would have done. Well, dad wouldn't them. feel guilty about shit. So. And probably would have just whooped them. Yeah. But she doesn't want to spank. Uh, it sounds like she's not getting a lot of support. And mm-hmm. so uh, I guess were I to give it, uh, like I've not raised a child that young. Um, but when I do have to interact with my granddaughter, um, walking away from the situation. Like I've, he- I've heard some advice on one time. probably That is burned into your um, But ignoring the behavior you don't want to see and encouraging the behavior. So I don't know how you do that with a toddler. I do know that with my granddaughters, when they've thrown tamper tam, I just like put them in a spot and walk away. I don't interact with them. I don't near them. They just keep away from them and stay here. And if they get up and walk away, I put them back, see them like starting to calm down, ready to get out of timeout. Um, so I think that might be good advice, but I also would say you might want to see if you can get, uh, it sounds like she just needs some dad. Or her village. Yeah, Their her village. village. We yeah. don't know who they are. Yeah. Um, she needs a break. She definitely needs a break. She needs more self-care. Yes. She needs I would some... say definitely self-care. Yeah. I would say self-care, getting your, your own emotion control. Yes. Um, Doesn't work all the time. Nope. Because you can get self-care and still lose your shit on your kids. That's life. I mean, I'm not trying to, but that's my life. Other people have it differently than what I do. But, you know, if you're tired of the whining and tired of the tantrums, your child is going to say no to probably for a long, forever. Oh, yeah. For the rest of their lives, frankly. Um, I would try to make a game of it if they're a toddler. Say, make it opposite day oh you meant yes okay let's go do this i mean you can make it fun if they're toddlers because they don't know better you know i mean just throwing something out there you know and the 
timeout if timeout don't work and he's goes into a major tantrum like screaming and even spitting i put him in a room he can't hurt himself in and close the door yeah i mean if it's getting to the point where you don't want to hurt him but you need to shock him a bit Mm -hmm. um low whisper or low kind of deep voice scared the shit out of a well i was gonna say um get a glass of water take him outside and throw it at him i'm not like the cup but like just shock him in a way Mm -hmm. that's not going to physically hurt him Mm -hmm. but like you know if it's getting to that point where he's like he won't if he's getting really ugly the shock alone without hurting him Mm -hmm. but i don't know like at that age i I, i've never spanked ayana or jalen's too little but Mm -hmm. i i have i have popped her on the hand before Mm -hmm. when she was grabbing at something she shouldn't but not like hard right so like i don't mind like a little bit of fiscal punishment is like it but it's a hard line to draw so right. like i understand why you would and want... if you're losing control yeah. you don't know how hard you're hitting yeah getting away from the situation helps both of you kind of self-regulate back what you're and if they're by uh spitting on you we don't want to start that that's I mean, that's i mean if you have a backyard in the backyard and like stay out there until you can act spit right as much as you want to out here help water the grass come on yeah i was like get away from them i would say it's like find a way you can get away ignore them because they that will be the biggest punishment yep is yeah um, so you put them in the, the corner timeout chair, or yeah. whatever you have as your timeout spot walk away go sit in a completely different room if you have like rooms apart go do that hell just go sit in the floor somewhere where it's very very far away from them they'll stop oh and then they'll be like where's mama or uh do what jennifer to get some uh, headphones yep put them in the corner put your headphones on yep. if they get up you see them moving away put them back mm-hmm. and just walk away again and just keep on putting them back and putting them back and putting yep. them back because they'll get tired yep I mean, yeah. I've had a dis- not discipline like this, like a spanking. I never spanked anybody because that that's not how I was. I feel like my punishments were worth spank. But if you're supposed to sit there until you calm down, me for one, I will fight you all day. Oh. I have that energy. <laughs> Especially with the noise canceling headphones. Put your murder show on. Put him in the corner. He walks. Put him back in the corner. I mean, he'll tire out before you do. Or they'll tire out before you because they're toddlers. They'll want to go have fun. And then if they get really like screamy, screamy, where, you know, the neighbors might think that you're killing them, go get a popsicle out of the fridge with your noise canceling headphones and just start eating it right in front of them. That'll shut them up really quickly. <laughs> I was going to say. My mama kind of did that. If you have the funds, I also just. Oh, yeah. Because if you're like having a problem, probably exhausted and just need some, someone to say, so if you can afford it, therapy. Yeah. And never give in because they will take that. And that is the hardest thing I think about is the giving in to what they want when they shouldn't have it. I mean, for me, that is what I, like when I dole out a consequence, that's my consequence as well. Like I'm in hell along with because of what I put on. So uh, I had to learn that it doesn't, so it took me a minute, but I also know, I don't know how he was treated in the past on punishment. So I kind of had to be German mama at front, up front because you can always go down. But you can't be all, oh, you get everything you want and then damn, bam, here's consequence. It don't work that way. That's how I felt. Yeah. And that's how I've done it. It's taken me, what, five years to kind of get to this point of a little back and forth and just trying different things. Because I don't want to hit him because when I first got him, it was pretty much... Just hit me and get it over with. <laughs> More has been done. So I didn't have him as a toddler, but he still throws tantrums like he is. Yeah. But sometimes he'll turn into a five-year-old on a, like, just out of nowhere. Yep. And cry and throw things. And he's stronger than a five-year-old. So there's holes in walls. And, and that's because he's going through a temper tantrum. Yep. So um, I wish you well. If yeah. you ever listen to this, hopefully these comments help you um, in any way. Yes, sir. If not, you can come up on the podcast. We'll yeah. have a drink. Mm-hmm. Go drop them off at a babysitter. Um, and then you can tell us what all you've tried and what you didn't. And we'll go from there. Uh, got time for one more? Are we done? Oh, no. We got because we, we've we've had a few long pauses. So I know, have like, we? Well, every time when I said so the the software you said at the podcast has a uh, feature that will like take out dead spots where we're not saying anything, uh-huh. and it drops the like when I use it as an automatic feature, it drops the podcast about 
five anywhere from five to oh wow i didn't so, realize we always had i guess that's yeah eating. i don't know it's nice because i don't have to like search for dead spots in the podcast so. it's really nice for you because yeah. you do all the work <laughs> all right so all this right. is this is a long one um but it was interesting um okay. so it's uh, an advice from the our parents subreddit and the title is, I was told I'm perpetuating racism, hot opinion, and uh, perpetuating advance courage. So if you're perpetuating racism, you're encouraging it, basically. That. Okay. So. Unless it's against white people. <laughs> well. Kidding, well, kidding. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, EJ, our friend EJ, who's black, he made a good point. There's no such thing as reverse racism because racism is not, people use discrimination and racism interchange, but discrimination is um, what most people think of as racism, but racism, he said, is a systematic, is a system of uh, oppression race by another. Mm -hmm. And so because the black community is the minority and they, they don't have the systems in place to oppress white people, there's white racism, there's white discrimination. Uh, well, I'll make white racism. <laughs> All right, so I'm here we kidding, go. I'm kidding. Here's the post. My daughter, almost two, and I went to Target last week and I had an encounter with a woman in the checkout. We we're white and the woman we encountered was white also. My daughter has a Mirabelle from the movie Encanto doll and a Moana doll. When we went to Target, we of course went down the toy aisle and she found the some some brand of doll. The but, same. No. Uh, oh, the same brand of doll, but in Tiana, Princess and the Frog, who she absolutely is obsessed with right now. Who she should be on is the bitch. She was so excited to find her that we decided to get her. Her day was made for those who don't black. We get to the checkout line. It was very long, which doesn't really do anything with the story, and stood and stood behind the woman who was shopping alone. She turned to my daughter and asked if she was buying the doll. I said, oh, no, it's for her. And she looked at me and said, well, you can't do that. That's a black doll. Those are for black girls. I was stunned and almost didn't know what to say. I told her, my daughter wants a doll. I'm getting her the doll, and it's not your place to tell me what I can and can't do for my child. That's right. Come on, girl. I like you. Or boy. I don't know. This woman stood there and gave me a very long lecture and said things like, I'm stealing a doll from a little black girl. I'm perpetuating racism by allowing my daughter to have black dolls, grooming my daughter to be a racist. I'm that I'm contributing to white supremacy. And she was loudly condemning my choice to allow my daughter to love a Tiana. I have a lot of thoughts on this, but ultimately I don't want I don't think it's a white woman's place to tell me what a race what's racist. In the end, we just moved lanes and I went to another cashier to get the hell out of there yeah. and to keep her from continuing to upset my daughter. I guess I'm at what she writes. No, hell no. Um a yeah. white one, no one can tell you what not buy. Yep. It is your fucking money. You do with it what you will. I praise you for getting your little white baby any color baby she won't. Because Tiana dolls are not made just specifically for black babies well i mean like frankly i think it would look worse to have a little girl be like i don't want to have any black dolls i, I don't if... want tiana because she's black i yeah. don't want maribel because she's latino fuck a bunch of that shit yeah if... she is not racist the white woman that was talking to them i find discriminatory what it... yeah, i know discriminatory. you gave a yeah. definition but whatever yeah, I've I've found that like I've seen these stories before where it, and it's usually like white people who are like blowing their gasket over perceived racism when the the uh, the minority in question is not does not find it racist at all and it, and like I I know I'm gonna open a can of worms in this mm -hmm. um, it kind of broaches that subject of cultural appropriation mm -hmm. where it's like i find that to be a very strange like not strange I, I do kind of understand like the idea of like if you're a white person and you're taking on elements of black identity to capitalize on it that se seems wrong but if you were like a little white kid and you grew up in a very black community and you are like married to a black person and you have black children like do you have you appropriated their culture or if you uh, like rap music, have you appropriated black culture because of it? Sure. I don't know. I find I find it a very strange question. And I mean, the thing is, the balls on. It's a, of course, it was an entitled white woman. To even talk. I mean, when you're in line, hi, how you doing? Oh, your baby's cute. You go back to your shit. This is none of your fucking. Second, you feel my baby is stealing from all the other little black babies. I don't see you going buying all the Tiano dolls and going giving them to black babies. Yeah. Or the Maribel dolls and going to give them to the Latina 
babies or the Latino babies because boys want to play with dolls too. Shit. Everyone wants to play with dolls. Yeah. I was a G.I. Joker. It's a doll. I know boys will say it's an act. Still a fucking doll. <laughs> Anyways, you are not helping yourself like the, the, the white lady. Yeah. And I that agree. whole thing. Like, as soon as she opened her mouth, Shit. I would have been like, please don't. I would have loved would, to have seen that. I wouldn't. I don't want to. Because the thing is, if I have my baby girl, if I have, if, if I have Ayana. Wait, I need to find a white. We have Chris, uh, Ava. Ava. Okay, because like, I'm like, or, or let's just say Ayana, Jalen, Kalia, Autumn, any mm. of the girls in my family that are black that want to have the white doll, you look at me and you look like you about to say some shit about my baby having another race doll? No, we're not having that. Unless unless that doll, it's a Hitler doll, fuck off. Well, the thing <laughs> is, is like you're, she hears this. Yeah. She might not understand the majority of the words that you're saying, depending on which, you know, which age grape, yeah. grape grade we're in but i don't need hate talk from you when i i'm pointing I at glass <laughs> because i know i, agree I don't you. need to hear that i agree i heard that way too much growing up i came out wonderful even with all of the racism that i heard i don't know how i praise my mama <laughs> probably because you didn't like your dad too. praise my mama but like you don't say shit when there's a baby there first off you don't say shit if you don't fucking know me entitled white women who think they like they get to be the police of other white women on how to treat black folks and it's like every black person i've ever met can fucking defend themselves great unless you hear the n-word popping out their mouth or something super inappropriate why don't you just keep your mouth shut because it does not involve you and well and even if they do say the n-word it doesn't involve you yeah i mean because i know a lot of people say the n-word and it's just because that's just they've grown up with it it is part of the vocabulary now they try to use it on me no 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 <laughs> that is number one most hated word in the vocabulary and you will not call me i don't care if it has an a at the end an er at the end call me lazy fine because i'm but i mean i don't care what comes out of your mouth sorry my son just oh, hopefully me. the microphone won't pick that up but like i don't care what comes out your mouth yeah just don't bring it at me yeah. You don't know me. You don't know my life. I, frankly, I find it like slightly racist on the the commenter's part because it's like trying to be the white savior. It's the, like the oh, lady, the one, the commenter, the one who, uh, the one who said the lady was being racist. You know, the one who made the comment about her daughter, not the not the original poster, but the the, other the lady. lady. I find it 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 bespeaks a white savior. It's like I've got to defend these. Poor black folk, because this other white woman is doing something. Mind your business and just be a good person. I bet this bitch doesn't even have black friends or family. And she would not have bought Mirabel, Moana, yeah. Tiana, any of them for her children, grandchildren, whatever, because she thinks it's wrong. It doesn't matter if she thinks it's wrong because it's supposed to be for a certain set of people. Race. And what does that if say she to her? Doesn't doesn't thinks it's wrong because white girls shouldn't play with black girls. Another form like there's so much yeah. discrimination, racism. Right? I'm the minority in my house. Me and my mama, we are just technically I'm the minority in this house too. Yeah. I don't care what kind of doll you want to play with. You want an Ariel? You want a Jasmine? I don't care. They don't look at it as colors. They look at it as I like that one because there's a frog. I like that one because Jasmine has a tiger pet. I like, you know, Ariel uh, singing with Sebastian under the sea. They don't see color yet. You guys teach them this shit. Agreed. In your, in your attempt to be ultra PC, you end up... Right. So just know. stop. Stop it, We God don't it. need old white people to help. It's probably some little young white woman, I bet. We don't need white people to help. <laughs> Well, we need to buy people. As I'm a white person. Yeah, we need to buy people to uh, stay in their lane. But yeah. I was told the other day that I was racist against white people. How the fuck am I racist <laughs> against white pers people? Are you a race I traitor? I am or a something? white person. <laughs> You're a race traitor, I guess. Whatever. Because of a macaroni statement. Oh, yeah, yeah. She shouldn't have been in my fucking business. There was an A-B conversation. She just seen her ass out of <laughs> I'm still pissed about that. should have reported her for HR. <laughs> And you know what would have happened? I probably would have went 
would have gotten in trouble. So no, I ain't gonna do that. Oh. Yeah, but I mean that one got me. I'm a little yeah. hyped now. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was a I'm, good topic to talk about. It's just I just don't see how these people feel they have the right. <laughs> don't talk to me or my children. You can say hi. Oh, she's pretty. Bam. Yeah. End of story. We yeah. ain't gotta have no more conversation. I don't like talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> unless I know them or someone vouches for them. But I'm not out here on these streets. Hey, how you doing? You want to be my friend? <laughs> Fuck me, a bunch of that shit. Let me comment on your child's top toy. I mean, but it's just yeah. how, 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 who said, hey, all y'all random white people, let's go to this Tupperware party and then we're just going to go around. You, that girl should not have a Tiana doll. That girl should not have, like, where do they get this shit from? I, think... no, I will never be an entitled white woman. All right. So if you think. I'm sorry, guys. If, if, uh, if y'all have thoughts on these uh, topics, write in and let us. Um, I think this is a good transition spot to Miss Jennifer um, and to our other 15. If you have any funny stories about your kids, I think she's finding her spot. It went away. Okay. Funny story, kids. <laughs> I, I, I got mad and I, I flipped Sheesh. it up. <clears throat> or if you need some bad parenting advice, or if you have any ideas for topics or just want to tell me to shut the fuck up, email us at guide to poor parent at gmail.com. All right, snack time. So I was walking around Kroger's and. I was like, oh, this oh. is from Kroger's? Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's from the uh, it's a Christie Cookie Company in Nashville. I think they didn't have a label, but I'm pretty sure it's toffee and pecan. I mean, they're yummy. Yeah, they're very good. I mean, you you made me try to talk with toffee pecan in my mouth. That <laughs> was not the way that I wanted it to go. I'm yeah, sorry. So they are very yummy. We highly, I like highly them. recommend. Yeah. All right, Miss Jennifer, we had our cocktail. We've had our snack. All right. So story time is we went to a, a, a stand-up place this weekend. When... She says we, me, Zane, oh, sorry. Jennifer. People went stand up place and I was one of them. Anyway, um, and we all decided we were going to go to the late show. Well, I don't know about y'all's kids, but if they hit a certain time, they turn into gremlins and ask. My son's cutoff is about 830 where it's just hell. And if I don't reach it, then I'm just in for a world of crying <laughs> and temper tantrums. Like he just re reverts back to a five-year-old that's like fighting bad. And he still. And he still fights it. Yes. But when I get him home at like eight and he can lay in his bed for a minute, play a little on his tablet. It's a little easier. Yeah. Well, the show didn't, like the gates didn't open up for us to go like, start until 8 15 so i was like mama my mama his old mom which is german for grandma and my pops uh were kind enough to let him spend the night which awesome thank you so much let me have a little bit of adult life and also they can just they because they go to see they see each other at church anyway so this is you know it's not like a big big deal right he just sleeps and then gets up and then goes to church so hopefully not out too much out out of their way or uh, too much of a hindrance because he can be a little bit of a butt. Right. So when I give Wesley his morning pills, which is a Vivance and a Clonidine, dude fights tooth and And I've had to find the right combination where I know that he's actually taking it. Because it's used to be where he would put him in his mouth and not let me see him, which then he would like palm him and like throw him behind the refrigerator or throw them where I would find them later, like stove, like just like quick flick of the wrist and it's gone. And then he'd be like, ah, I took it. So there's, you know, well, usually when Jason or Zane give him the medicine in the morning, because I work seven to four, so I drop Wesley off here because luckily his junior high and Clea is such a tech school. <laughs> they... I have not heard much about the pill, really. Like yeah, he, he takes them when we give them. Like, he's told me he was just going to go to the bathroom and throw them up, but he doesn't have a why. It's control. He doesn't. That makes sense if, if it's, you know, if you guys don't have no problems, yeah. that makes sense. So Sunday, Mama or Pops or Patrick, someone gave him his pills and said, take your pills. Patrick, like, went to the sink maybe to wash his hands. I don't. He didn't really give me full story, but he sees this little orange thing kind of near the drain, and he's like, what the fuck is that? My brother doesn't cuss. I am <laughs> cussing for my brother. <laughs> it's Wesley's folk, uh, Focalin, or Vivance. I think Mom and Pops had already started going to church. Patrick called them. They took back to the house, made him dig it out of the near the garbage disposal and take that. Amazing they didn't like push it down the drain the rest of the way. 
The thing is, I don't think he realized because we don't have a garbage disposal at my house. <laughs> uh, it got stuck there. Now, y'all might think that's nasty. This is also the kid that took a stick and put it in his mouth and has done a whole bunch of other really nasty things. So, no. It is not. He just told Oma, I can't talk on, on my pill. That was his excuse of why he didn't want to take them. Well, why, tell me why. We've only been in school for, what, a month? And I've had four phone calls where Wesley won't sit down or shut up. He might be spitting them out with me, but I'm just not catching it. But I see him put it in his mouth and swallowing it. So I'm, that may Do be... you make him open his mouth after he swallows? I don't. That's what I do. But he usually talks to me afterwards. So I'm like, unless he's getting. Because I don't know if he's gotten good at like kind of. But I'm also not finding him around the backyard or anything. So that's why I haven't been like fighting him on it. Yeah. So. I don't know. I make him. I put him in his hands. I watch him put him in his mouth. I have to see them in his mouth. Then he has to take two sips of water. And then he has to open his mouth and let me look. He has to lift up his tongue. And I have to check everywhere. To make sure that it's not like hidden somewhere. Yeah. Like he's chipmunk. I know Matt Matt used to do that with his. He didn't like the way of like if he doesn't take it. It's like he's just not capable of man it is. My thing is he needs. Yeah. No. Same with he Matt. He so needs it. But he also needs to explain to the th- psychiatrist what about them he doesn't like. Because he has never ever said anything. You're asking too we, much mom. We, too much. we, we go. And he's like, they're okay. If you don't like these pills, we can try other ones that maybe let you talk more, which I feel like you're doing a damn good job talking if my the school <laughs> calls and says he won't sit down or be quiet. Well, the p- p- stupid question, but will the school not give them in the morning? I think she wants them before school to let them kick in before first period starts because the afternoon pills are to kind of just kind of... Tied them. Yeah. Okay, just curious. Because it's a lower dose of focalin in the afternoon with another clonidine to hopefully get him through, um, well, like sixth, seventh period, and then pretty much part of boys and girls. Just but he's never acted like a zombie on any of them. He's never shown any difference when I give them to him like on a weekend. If I give him to him on the, in the morning on the weekend, he's the exact same than if I don't. So I see no difference. So I'm usually the one telling the psychiatrist, well, this person called me on this day and said (laughs) this. And if he doesn't have any feedback, then she goes by me because I'm the only one trying. I mean, (laughs) I really just want him to sit down and shut up. Teacher called and I had to threaten to leave work and go sit with him in fucking class. Mm. Teacher said that worked for one day. And then he did something in an ISS and then he got kicked out of the Boys and Girls Club. There is no, there's like no rhyme or reason. Like there's no, I can't yeah. find the pattern. Right. And when I can find that, it might help. <laughs> he surely does not give any input but it's okay. a talk left. But you still fucking talk. Yep. So you're not a zombie. Grr. Grr. Sorry, guys. That's my story. A little bit more in detail, but... Well, uh, thanks for our alert, Bye. for listening to another episode of A Guide to Poor Parenting. If you like our podcast, please give us a five-star rating on whatever platform you're listening on. And if you don't like our podcast, just like when our kids bitch about what we make for dinner, even though they refuse to give us any suggestions when we go shopping. Tough shit. Eat it. You asked for this, but my part of that. <laughs> Bye. Bye.